Welcome to 2022, where you can do anything a man can do. I am so excited to finally be here. You are going to love it. Feminism has done so much for women. Do tell. No more aprons, first of all. Oh, do we finally have a butler to cook for us? Oh gosh, no. You'll just eat pre-made greasy crap out of a bag on your way to and from work. I suppose that sounds convenient. So I get to work outside the home? Totally. You get to sit in a cubicle all day while you stare at a computer screen chugging coffee. So liberating. This is not a Colbert Report style self-own of feminism. This is a proud trad wife. Trad wife? What's that? Well, basically... It's a woman who identifies with traditional gender roles and hierarchy, America in the 50s, what Trump harkens to in Make America Great Again. Get it? It's trumpeted, broadcasted all over social media. And feminists who don't identify with the domestic lifestyle sense an underhanded motive behind its growing social media presence. In addition, you know, in addition to being revisionist, I also just want to point out that the timing of this is really suspect, right? Like this is happening at the same time abortion rights have been rolled back and that's not a coincidence. Could be. Here's what they think it means. This is part of a broader cultural pacification campaign that is trying to make young women feel better about the fact that their rights have been stripped away. And the idea is that they think if they try to tell this next generation of, of women who are growing up without reproductive rights that actually it's okay because going back to this time is actually progress, then women won't be so angry and that women won't take as much action. Hey, if you don't know what rights you have, do you strive for them? Keep that in mind throughout the video. The easiest way to change women's perception of their rights is what the Republicans are doing right now, which is find every legal route possible to criminalize abortion, period. And women are facing the physical, mental, and economic consequences of not having reproductive care choices. So yeah, I think the trad wife movement online is a more topical, in-your-face attack by women on women. It's unhealthy. And this lady is actually revealing the real problem without recognizing it. Women are given a false dichotomy. Be a housewife or strain yourself trying to break that mold because that maintains the patriarchal, capitalistic infrastructure America is and has been. And it is reflected in every aspect of women's lives. We have to ask ourselves, are all women who stay home there because they wanted to be? If they started a family, is mom given any time for self-development. Now, I have no problem with women choosing to be a stay-at-home mom or spouse. Maintaining a stable home and family is a huge responsibility that society chronically underappreciates, and capitalism profits from it. Home management is a job that I think, personally, should be paid. Many stay-at-home moms are such, not out of choice, but from lingering gender role conventions, Republicans now planning families for them and an unstable jobs market that doesn't pay what people are worth. Our childcare system is crumbling, and what remains of it is overpriced and not provided by employers. So staying home becomes a necessity in many two-parent families. It's a byproduct of an economy that makes you work to survive. And that's if you can even afford a home on one or even two salaries. Which leads to the topic of women in the workplace. If women work and require childcare, they better be making enough to pay for it or have family nearby to babysit. Hustle culture is a big thing now. Working overtime without being compensated properly for it? That's late stage capitalism at its best. Women are forced to work longer hours in many jobs for unequal pay. And because wages haven't risen with inflation, women are working more than one job to get by. Feminism just hasn't resonated enough with the greedy CEOs. It's no surprise in today's social, economic, and political landscape that corporations yield more power over people than they should be allowed to. But The Intercept has linked companies like Amazon, Google, and Facebook to the overturning of abortion rights in the United States. 
I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and with these types of stories, the impacts of corporations on public policy are usually difficult to track and trace, or they at least require a bit of digging, even if you don't always have to dig too deeply. The truth is, we know that corporations have ulterior views apart from the ones they profess publicly, and we know that they often have ulterior motives apart from the ones that would be seen as publicly popular. Their bottom lines trump every ethical or moral stance they might appear to take, and savvy consumers are typically hip to the fact that we should be skeptical of these corporations whenever they side with the public on timely issues, on social media, and in Super Bowl ads. The reason skepticism is prudential is simple. Corporations are not people despite what the government has decided, therefore corporate values, motives, and goals are not the same as those of the people. The assertion in The Intercept's finding is that corporations like Amazon, Google, and Facebook funded a conservative group called the Independent Women's Forum. That group was behind a push to install more conservative judges on the Supreme Court, and once that was done, the conservative Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, throwing health protections for women into chaos, compromising the separation of church and state, and empowering conservative leaders in their quest to demonize and criminalize people who are simply trying to live their lives as best they can within this near dystopian society that we have built for ourselves. So while it takes a few steps to get from corporations to abortion rights, the groundwork for the overturning of Roe v. Wade had been set for decades leading up to the court's decision. The Independent Women's Forum goes all the way back to 1991 when it pushed for the confirmation of embattled conservative Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, even though he was an accused sexual offender at the time. The group has also supported the confirmations of conservative justices Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett it, without whom we'd still have Roe v. Wade protections. On top of that, the group has backed other conservative issues such as immigration alarmism and climate change denial, funding its efforts with large corporate donations. Lisa Graves, the founder of True North Research, a progressive watchdog group that provided insights to The Intercept, said of the Independent Women's Forum, quote, They act as a die staff, in essence providing a woman's space for the right wing's critique or attack on progressives and its advance of the extreme and regressive, repressive agenda. The trade-off for corporate support of conservative ideals, especially support from large Silicon Valley tech firms, is protection from antitrust scrutiny, without which these large monopolistic and predatory corporations would not be allowed to function or exist. Graves goes on to say, quote, Institutionally, the Independent Women's Forum has no position on abortion, that's their stated position, but organizationally, they have backed the most aggressive anti-choice slate of judges we've ever seen. Now, I remember back when the Tea Party was a thing during the W. Bush and Obama eras, pushing conservative values at the expense of not just people, but systems. One thing that I think progressives need to square with is the fact that conservative ideals are never going to go away. They're always going to pop up within societies around the world, especially as progressive ideas begin to gain traction and popularity. It's not controversial or particularly insightful to say that Trump's presidency was a direct response from the conservative community to Obama's presidency. Obama was seen as a step in the wrong direction, a step away from tradition, a step away from, let's say it, the de facto status quo white Christian supremacy in the United States. It didn't matter that Obama was actually a Christian because his name wasn't Christian enough, whatever that means. You know what it means. The fear of otherness, which could also be known as racism, xenophobia, misogyny, or whatever other intellectualism you can think of, will always be a prime motivator for those who seek to oppress. 